This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Christian faith, one word at a time. That's what we've been taking a look at in our video devotions here throughout the summer. Today, our word we look at is sacrifice. This, this is the definition that is given for sacrifice. To suffer loss, give up, the surrender of something for the sake of something else, to renounce, especially for a belief. And you think of, of some of the ways that sacrifice is used in everyday language. In the realm of baseball, there's one batter who gives himself up, willing to make an out to hurt his stats, not to pad his stats. He gives a sacrifice bunt in order to move the runner along. For the good of the team, for the good of the runner, he suffers loss himself. You think about all the Old Testament sacrifices. The Jew had to come and sacrifice a lamb or a bull. What did they receive in return? Nothing. As far as outward material things go. In fact, that burnt offering, that burnt sacrifice, they saw their lamb, their bull, go up in smoke. They suffered loss if you only look at it from the worldly point of view. Well, how many of us like to sacrifice ourselves? Go back to that definition. To suffer loss of, to give up, to surrender of something for the sake of something else. Isn't it true that oftentimes, if there isn't something in it for me, we don't really like to do it. Sacrifice my precious time to do chores around the house? No way, the child says. In fact, they whine and complain. Sacrifice my game time to either play video games or to watch the game in order to do dishes? you got to be kidding me. Sacrifice the way I've always done things because it bothers somebody else, my spouse or, or a friend. Well, they just need to learn to deal with it. Isn't that the way we usually look at things, the way that we think of things? People need to change in order to fit what I want. Not, not me having to change to serve others. That would be too much of a sacrifice. Well, God's word says something completely different, doesn't it? Take a listen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We find those words in Romans chapter 12. And, and in Romans chapter 12, Paul begins this encouragement to Christians, to lives of love, lives of service to God. And he begins by saying, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Now think about that. Your bodies as living sacrifices. This is more than just a, a few dollars being placed in the offering plate each week for, for the work of the church. This is, this is more than sitting in a pew or a chair in worship and giving God one hour a week. And so the Apostle Paul says, Offer your bodies, you, everything you are, as this living sacrifice. 
And in all reality, what, what is he speaking against? He's speaking against that, that pride that so, so easily finds its way into our hearts. Let me just stop and think about it. Within, within congregations, how many hard feelings and challenges and difficulties and problems have come up because of people's pride? An unwillingness to, to sacrifice one's own wants for the sake of somebody else. And, and isn't that one of the things that is even happening right now? Pride, looking at everything that's going on in our world and the mandates that are there in one way, but not being willing to sacrifice what I feel and what I think and the way I believe it should be for the sake of somebody else who might feel differently. And so there's an unwillingness to forgive. An unwillingness to say, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Yes, it's very easy for Christians living in this world to adopt the mindset of this world that says the only one that I should be looking out for is me, myself, and I. And that carries itself over into all sorts of our life too, if that's the mindset we have, right? Well, if I want to do this, then what happens? God's word gets set aside because the only one I'm thinking about is me. And so Paul comes and says, yes, offer your bodies as living sacrifices and do not conform to the ways of the world. We are to be non-conformists. No, I'm not talking about that, that hippie revolution of the 1960s or to be like the Amish and say, well, I can't use anything that has a, a battery or a motor or, or whatever it might be. No, what he's saying is we cannot adopt the ways of the world that says goal number one is simply to get what I want. Instead, goal number one needs to be listening to our Savior. Goal number one needs to be hearing what he has done for us. Goal number one needs to be always building and working on our relationship with our Heavenly Father through faith in Jesus Christ. And then with that as number one goal, it will carry over into offering our bodies as living sacrifices. And why? Why in all the world should we do it? Well, our lesson stated it so beautifully. In view of God's mercy. That's the canvas on which the, the Christian life is to be sketched. You see, the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul has so beautifully listed, laid out, presented to us everything that Jesus Christ has done in order to, to save us. He's listed and laid out to us the fact that we didn't deserve any of it. We were sinners. We were lost. And yet, God loved sinners. Even when we were sinners, even when we were destitute, lost, and wanted nothing to do with him, God said, I want you. And so he sent his son. And Jesus thought nothing of offering himself as a sacrifice. In fact, he wanted to. He was willing to. He set his steps, his direction, his face right to the cross so that he would offer himself as a sacrifice. Talk about the ultimate sacrifice. The sacrifice of his very own life. The sacrifice of of exchanging places with us so that he would endure the wrath our punishments deserve, so that he would endure the anguish and the agony and the pain of guilt, so that he would endure the torments of hell. All for somebody else, for you. 
in view of that, Paul says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Put God, his will, his word first, even if it means loss. Love your neighbor, even if it means having to surrender your will. And do it. Not because you want the praise of men, not because you want a pat on the back, not because you say, oh, it makes me feel so good. But do it in view of God's mercy, in view of the sacrifice that your Savior gave for you. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices. We pray. Well, Savior Jesus, it is so difficult for us in this life, with our sinful nature still clinging to us so much, to be willing to set aside pride, to be willing to set aside our desire to simply have what we want and to sacrifice ourselves for you and for others. And yet when we look at your sacrifice for us, we realize we need not conform to the ways of this world, but instead we desire to walk in your path. We desire to follow your example. For in what you have done, you have set for us an example to sacrifice ourselves. But not only have you given us that example, but in your sacrifice you have won the forgiveness of our sins. So when we stumble and when we fall, when our pride gets the better of us, we run back to you, fall on our knees before you, and ask of your mercy. Give us that mercy for the sake of your sacrifice. We pray this in your name. Amen. God's blessings. Until next week.